The Fatiha, it is not. The, fa the Basmala is not part of the Fatiha. Even though if you open the Mus'haf now, <coughs> you will see verse 1, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Shaykh bin Uthani, rahimahullah, and many other of the previous scholars were of the position that it is not. And the first verse of Al-Fatiha is, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. And they quoted evidence for that, which I will deal with, inshallah, later on. So since I follow the opinion that it is not part of the Fatiha, it is just uh, an introduction to the Fatiha, then consequently, if you don't read it in the Fatiha, it doesn't affect the validity of this Fatiha or the Salah. But we want to do it anyways. Why? Because when you say Bismillah, first you're seeking the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you're trying to attain Allah's pleasure. And you're trying to remember the purpose of your ibadah. This is why in Islam it is recommended to say Bismillah before you do anything. Right? Before anything you, you say Bismillah. <coughs> why? So you can turn your habits into acts of worship. Number one. Number two. So you will not be able to do evil. Right? Can someone, I mean by Allah, can someone take out a cigarette and say Bismillah and light it? <laughs> huh? Maybe someone next to him will punch him. Bow! Woe to you! Shame on you! Bismillah before you disobey Allah. So when you get used to saying Bismillah, when you're about to do something haram, and you find that you cannot say Bismillah here, say, hey, maybe I shouldn't do this anymore. Right? So it becomes like a yardstick. Is this, is this thing halal or haram? If you cannot find it feasible to say Bismillah, you shouldn't be doing it. Isn't that beautiful? So this is one of the benefits of Bismillah on, you know, in, in, in all cases, but particularly in the Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of everything. First <coughs> and foremost, Alhamd. The fact that it begins with Alif Lam, which is known in Arabic as Alif Lam al Ta'rif, is different than the word being Hamd without the Alif Lam. Because Alif Lam indicates the ultimate meaning of the word. The utmost meaning of the word is attained when you say Alhamd. Hamd and Shukr are not the same. Shukr, which is thankfulness, thank you, shukran, is not like hamd. This is why you cannot say all thanks are due to Allah. Because they're not the same. Why? What is the difference between hamd and shukr? According to the scholars, shukr has to do with a favor being done to you. Yani, the brother gives me a ride <coughs> to my house. I say, shukran brother, thank you. Why? Because of a, a direct favor from him to me. However, if I hear about a very righteous brother who's known for doing a lot of da'wah and so on and so forth, and I start saying, MashaAllah, this brother is this, this brother is that, and I praise him, did he do anything for me? No. Praising is when one is being praised or extolled for their qualities, whether they have done something to you or not. You see what I'm saying? You may praise someone for the qualities they have, even though you never tasted them. You just know that he's generous. Say, MashaAllah, the brother is generous. He never gave you a halala. You see? But shukran, you don't thank him for being generous, because that didn't really affect you. This is the technicality in terminology. So alhamdulillah is more, right, than simply shukran. And why do we praise Allah and not simply thank him? Because, what, because Allah deserves the praise, period. Because of His perfection, because of His beauty, because of His names and attributes. And this requires shukr, uh, hand, which includes shukr. The fact that we are receiving everything from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something which requires of us to be thankful to Allah azza wa jal. Alhamdu lillah, to Allah, or praise is due to Allah. Allah, or what is as Lafdul Jalala, Lafdul Jalala, is a proper noun which belongs to Allah and not shared with anyone among the creation. You will find that people wind up naming themselves everything, but no one will be able to carry the name Allah. 
this name is strictly to Allah Azza wa Jal. Of course, in terms of comparative uh, approach with other religions, it is superior to any other word in the world because if we were to use English, God can become plural, gods or feminine, goddess, right? And you know, it, 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 goes, it undergoes a number of <coughs> grammatical uh, variations. However, uh, the love of Jalala Allah cannot become feminine, cannot become plural, cannot be changed. So it is very befitting. So Alhamdulillah, Alhamd and praising is a quality which many of the prophets and the messengers had used. And if you were to read the Quran, you will find that Alhamdulillah is said so often by the messengers. For instance, to quote some, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he wanted to quote is, uh, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa said, Alhamdulillah alladhi wahaba li ala al-kibari Ismaila wa Ishaq, inna rabbi lasami'u al-du'a. All praise is due to Allah, who gave me Ismail, Ishmael and Ishaq and Isaac in old age. He was very old. Verily, my Lord or Allah, my Lord, responds to the invocations. Alhamdulillah. And Allah says, وَلَقَدْ آتَيْنَا دَاوُودَ وَسُلَيْمَانَ عِلْمًا وَقَالَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي فَضَّلَنَا عَلَى كَثِيرٍ مِنْ عِبَادِهِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And really we had given David and Solomon knowledge. And he said, O oh, praise is due to Allah, who has favored us over many of his believing servants. And the list goes on. الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب O oh, praise is due to Allah, who has sent down the book upon his messenger. Alhamdulillah, wa qul alhamdulillah alladhi lam yattakhid walada and say, O oh, praise is due to Allah who did not beget a son. So you find that Allah praises Himself in the Quran, so He may direct us to praise Him consequently. So Alhamdulillah is a great statement. Rabbil Alameen. Rabb linguistically means master, owner, lord. And if it is used, as a possessive, what is known in Arabic as idafa, if it is in the possessive structure, it may refer to someone else. Like in the Arabic language, you say, Rabbul Da, Rabbul Amal, the Lord of the business or the Lord of the uh, house, and so on and so forth. Meaning, He is the master. But when you say, Ar Rabb, then this can only be fit and it only is attributable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ar Rabb has Three main qualities. Three main qualities are involved which make him distinct from everyone else. Al-Khalq, creation. Al-Mulk, sovereignty. And Al-Tadbir, arranging the affairs of the creation. These are things that none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. He is the Lord. And the Rububiyyah of Allah azza wa jal is divided into two categories. First is general and the second is specific. As for the general one, it is Allah's rububiyyah to the whole creation. Who created the children of Adam? Who created the heavens and the earth for them? Who gave them everything they have? Who gave them everything they have? Who protected them from the time they were conceived in their mother's womb? I mean, a woman, while she's pregnant, she moves, she walks, she sleeps, she may fall at times. How is this baby, this tiny creature, that is in helpless in the ultimate sense of the word, helpless. Even when he's born, he cannot do anything, let alone in the early stages of development. How is he preserved and protected for nine months, living in a small container, in a bag? If you really want to look at it from another angle, a baby living in a bag, a bag full of liquid, somehow surviving. Then 